Good evening, everybody. My name is Olushala Fale. Permit me, I cannot stand here and call my boss by name. So I will refer to him as Dr. Herbert, or probably Doctor. Forgive me. Thank you. So, yes. Yes, sir. 19, sorry, 2019, or at the early part of, the late part of 2018, it was a time for Access Bank to acquire Diamond Bank. Everybody was thrown into tumult with a mind of uncertainty of what next. You know what plays out when an institution acquires the other. So the fate of the staff of the acquired institution becomes shaky. What a December. Everybody was worried. I was more worried because I didn't know what next. January, it was a Wednesday, and in the midst of my worry, I had a prayer group that we pray every night, interestingly, binding and casting that this measure is not going to work. <laughs> and on Wednesday, that fateful day, my phone rang. And I heard, Dr. Herbert wants to see you. I was like, how? From where? And I had to go to Uzama's office, and I met him. And he called me my name. How are you, Shola? I would like you to start working with me. So I stood, wondering where is this coming from? I was looking at Uzama's face like, I hope I'm not betraying you if I say yes. And the next thing, he just signaled me that, don't worry, don't worry, we've talked about it. And he asked me, when do you want to start? I said, uh, okay, he said, report in my office at 6 p.m. So I went that day, and we closed at 12 midnight. It was a baptism of what is to come for me. And that was the beginning of a new life. And I came to realize that one of his strengths, Dr. Herbert, is that he comes to you in a time of storm and he rescues you. I can remember vividly my first trip to London. How do you describe a trip that everything you imagine in a movie became a reality. I saw myself landed in Luton Airport, and immigration came in to stand by passports, and a vehicle was waiting. I've never seen that in my life before. <laughs> Only in a movie. And we came down, I was like, is that it? Guess where we were going? He had a dinner with Theresa May that day. How else do you describe a grand entry? It is only one person that can make that happen. And so it was the beginning of our journey. One thing I've always learned in life is I am always committed to what I do. And I think he saw that and he feels you need to buckle up and grow. Then COVID came. During COVID, when lockdown was to be announced, that evening, I was looking at him and I was worried. 
I'm like, I cannot leave him at this kind of moment because my boss knows everything, but he struggles with technology. So I walked up to him and I said, sir, I will move into Parkview with you. He said, how about your wife? I said, I will talk to her. Auntie Doreen was in London then. And that night that lockdown was announced, I moved into Parkview. So we were always together. I don't go home. He doesn't go to anywhere to, except when COVID started and you know, we, sometimes we go to the office. But I make sure that we are always together. I make sure he has no problem whatever, whatsoever joining his meeting. And one night, around 3 a.m., I think Uchi was around then, and he said, Shola, tell me, whatever education, wherever in the world you want to have it, I will let you have it. I remember he enrolled in University of London for his law degree. I enrolled in the same university for my master's in information technology. And we went through this journey together. We would go to Mabea and read together. I just noticed that suddenly I became a son of the family. Tochi will always come to me for advice. Cheesy cannot go to him without coming through me. And sweet mommy, like I call Auntie Doreen, you know, I, I had to mention this because I remember one day in Cape Town, I called grandma, that's her mom, that name, and she took offense that that's for me. So I refer to her as sweet mommy because she's ever sweet. And that's the man, just one man got through into this generation. And I don't think anytime soon we'll have such a man. One early morning in Dusseldorf, we were in Germany, and he called me to get him a power bank. I went to his room around 4 a.m. So he was seated on the headboard of the bed, Usually when we travel, he gives me one of his keys, so I opened, I just knocked and opened the door. I went in and what I saw that morning scared me. So I saw his eyeball so dim, not like an ordinary human. And I gave him the charger, I went back. In the afternoon, I asked him, I said, sir, I was afraid when I saw you that morning. He said, those are the times he reflects on what to do. He's a great man. He lives. So that is why I pick most of those songs, because I still see him. He lives. He's just everywhere living, because his dream is scattered everywhere, germinating and growing. Now to our journey, our last journey. Five of us embarked on that journey. I remember Mr. Bimbo chatted me and said he wants to come with us. It was a Tuesday. And I told him, my boss journey is not always straightforward. Sometimes we can get in the air and divert somewhere else. And he said he was going to wait. I said he was still going to Abuja that day. And maybe we'll be leaving later, later in the midnight. And he said he was going to wait. I still try to let him understand that we will be in London Wednesday, Thursday, 
and Friday. He said he will stay in his house and wait. I really don't know why I was trying to convince him not. I don't know, you know. And we all went on the journey. We got to London. I remember on Friday after my boss's uh, board meeting in Access UK, he already told me to call Tiny, one of his business partners, to come from Lisbon to have a meeting. He had that meeting. He wasn't satisfied. He said, ride with me. When Dr. Herbert tells you, ride with me, it is all meeting. You know, so they rode from uh, Access UK to the, to the house because we needed to park. We parked, and we were all rushing to go to the airport. We got to the airport in Luton and boarded. It was a sweet journey. It was a sweet journey. 11 hours, we flew from London to Palm Spring. I remember in the middle of the air, I walked up to him. I said, sir, how comfortable are you flying chopper at night? I've never done it before. And he said a word, he said, this is America. They have navigation system for flying chopper at night. And I went back to my seat. And we landed. Everybody was filled with joy that we're finally almost there. We sat, waited to be cleared by immigration, and we came out. So coming out, we had two vans waiting. One was to take us to go board the chopper. The other was to take our luggage because they cannot go on the chopper. Throughout my year of working with him, I've always told myself that flying that way is not a luxury for me. I am on duty. And as they were loading the uh, luggages, and this thought started playing in my mind that, okay, you will fly chopper, one hour you are there. The next three and a half hours, the luggages are not going to come. Will I go to bed? No. I still have to sit down and wait for those luggages to come. And I'm like, so why not just go with the luggages and get there and deliver to him and others in the room? Like I said, I always reason in the line of duty. And I walked up to him, I said, sir, I think it's safer and will be secure for me to just ride and bring the luggage to you. He said, brilliant idea. And I said, safe flight. Since 2019, I cannot count one or two places or flights that is being in the north.